now with Sue Black and Ron Wood from Oxford Orient Fish. Welcome to our studio once again. Well, thank, thank you, you. for having us. <laughs> Just so, have to correct you. My name is not Black. Oh, which Hackstock. Oh, I'm Sue sorry. Sue Black is our pet pantry coordinator. That's Who okay. Is on your tea. That's, that's, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> I just don't want her to think, oh, there's another me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start off with a uh, little bit of a history in, uh, of uh, Oxford Orient Fish. When, how long has this organization been serving the community? 51 years. Wow. 51 years. That's an awful long time. Now, you used to be in a little building on the north end of Oxford, um, but you moved into this beautiful building you have currently. When, when did that happen? That was within the last, October, what, five, six, seven years? Middle of October, October. 2018. 2018. So we've been there a little over five years. Now. Yeah, yeah. How, how has that been working out for you, having that nice uh, central location? Excellent. It's, it's yeah. Couldn't be better. There's, uh, <laughs> there's a number of just internal benefits as well. Being able to move the product from the where our warehouse area to the shelves, it's all on one level before we were up and down the stairs carrying right. things. And as you yeah. get an well. older volunteer base, it's, uh, <laughs> it's nice to have that. We're able to move product, to, like I said, a lot quicker. We have flatbed uh, carts that we use to move nice. the crates into, into the shopping area. Yeah, and being right off of M24 there, it seems like it's easy access where before that building was on some off roads and I remember going there would be really snowy and kind of mm. hard to get to. So it's nice having that easy access right there by uh, Trainer. Uh, and it's also a little more centrally located yeah. between Oxford and Lake Orion. We're much closer to Lake Orion now than we were before. And we used to get a few uh, clients that would say it's quite a drive for them to you know come from southern orient all the way up to thomas yeah and, right yeah yeah so um when covid rolled around it was kind of interesting because the need for your services s surprisingly dropped during covid because people were receiving the yeah. stimulus checks and things like that um now with dealing with the inflation and stuff what are your numbers currently what is the demand currently uh actually in 2023 we had uh our record high uh for number of pounds distributed so we were wow. we were uh, a little over 239,000 pounds of food that was distributed oh, wow. our previous high was in 2019 of 203,000 and in 2022 we were at a little over 189,000. So we were up 50,000 pounds of, of food from 2022 to 2023. And so um, it took a little while to get, to get used to, you know, supplying that additional food, but, uh, yeah. but we've caught up and we're, I think, managing it pretty well. Yeah. Wow. Now over the holidays is when a large influx of donation comes in, but I was told that February, March, things tend to get a little light on the shelves. Is that true? Um, normally, that's that's the case. Um, we had a, a pretty good surge the end of uh, December with donations, and so um, we have a, a, a fair amount of food currently. But at twenty thousand pounds a month, you know, you, you <laughs> it disappears you pretty quickly. Sure. So. So when we do get into that February, March, and then even early April, um, I wouldn't say uh, the community forgets about us, but it's, it's not top of mind like it is during the holidays. Yeah. yeah, and so then in the spring, obviously there's the big post office food drive, which brings in a lot of, lot of donations. So that's why we here at ONTV uh, scheduled our food drive between the holidays mm -hmm in the post office food drive to kind of help you uh, get to that next major uh, drive that you have. Uh, what, is, what is the number one source of donations? Where does the bulk of your donations come from? Oh. Well, we, schools, uh, churches? Um, well, we, we get supported by uh, um, the different townships and villages. Uh, they give us grants through, through, the, through the year because mm -hmm. we're helping some of the residents at the food pantry. Um, we get businesses that donate money. We get churches that donate money. We get individuals that donate money. Mm. Um, it, it's really amazing uh, how well the community at whole supports the food pantry. I mean, that enables us to do what we do. Mm. And your, your team here 
Um, as you mentioned, that gives us a nice shot uh, in the arm in the middle of uh, wintertime. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a community effort, in my opinion. And, and uh, um, I don't know that there's one particular source, but there's a, just a number of sources that, that, that help us financially. Yeah. Now, uh, when, we, when COVID again rolled around, we got away from the one day food drive thing. We went the entire week and we kind of started focusing on cash donations more than the food donations. Now we still do get the food yeah. donations. We try to fill our own TV truck, uh, but talk about what cash donations allow you to do. Um, it allows us to pick and choose the items that we need. Right. So there's certain, there's certain items that we get a lot of donations. You get your green beans, your corns. We have yeah, thousands of those in stock. Yeah. Oh but there's, we, we try to offer a, a large variety of different, yeah. uh, different food items. And so if we're running short of canned chicken or we're running short of uh, hamburger helper or we're running short of uh, peanut butter, whatever it may be, enables us to utilize those funds to purchase what we, what we don't get in donations. Because yeah. they're still in demand from the, from the clients that shop. Sure. Right. Speaking of your clients, um, talk about how that works. How do clients come to your attention and then how do they utilize your services? They call. They're aware of that we're here. So they call and they make an appointment and um, they, can, they come in and shop. Once they're allowed to come in every 30 days, but they always have to call and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. And um, then it's poundage per person or, you know, or per family, per person actually. Um, and they get that, that much poundage of food. Mm -hmm. And it's weighed when they come, it's in a, you know, just like they're shopping at Meijer. You know, everything is, I mean, it's pretty much, they pick, what, pick and choose what they want and it's weighed and they're on their way. Yeah. Wow. Now, prior to COVID, uh, there were some criteria that families had to meet. And then I, I know that was lifted immediately mm -hmm. after COVID. Are there any criteria today that a family has to meet to be able to utilize your services? Not really, not anymore. Not like it used to be. It's yeah, a lot yeah. different than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. We kind of still kind of watch and kind of are aware, but um, basically we don't go through all the showing proof of all this stuff. They have to live in Oxford or Orion, Addison Township. They. Um, and we ask for their driver's license to, you know, kind of prove that they live in the area. But yeah. that's pretty much all we really are after, mm -hmm. taking them on their word, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. And they're pretty good. I can't say they're not. They yeah. know. It's got to be tough, you know, to admit that you need help. Exactly. I mean, it's got to be hard. Exactly. So to make someone come to you for help and have them jump through hoops has got to be very discouraging. So it's yeah, kind of nice. Yeah, it that, is nice. It's working yeah. out very well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you also depend heavily on volunteers. Do you want to talk about how people can volunteer their time to help you out? Yeah, just call the office and we'll gladly take, you know, names and, and tell them what's available, what we do, where we're at, and let them, um, you know, let them pick and choose. They can work in the office. Uh, answering the phone, filling appointments, or they can work in the pantry with Ron, stocking shelves, mm -hmm. or be in there with, you know, helping the clients at the, you know, uh, do their shopping for the week or whatever. But we are all volunteers. That's very, yeah. very important to us that be, yeah. the community knows that we are, it's all volunteers. None of us get paid. I mean, Ron would be a millionaire if he got paid <laughs> <laughs> all his hours. But no, we are. We're just all volunteers. And it works out very well. Yeah. It's a very good, very wonderful, wonderful organization. Yeah. So that those donations are going on the shelves. On for the shelves. That's right. On the shelves. Right. Um, How often do you stock the shelves? Uh, we stock uh, every Tuesday morning and every Thursday morning. So... Um, so uh, the Tuesday st stocking is, is it's a larger because we try to staff enough or put enough food on the shelves for two days of shopping because mm -hmm. we have shopping on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then Thursday, we stock Thursday morning for Thursday and then, and then uh, come back on Tuesday, we, uh, we stock for what's been taken on, uh, yeah. on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, those are the two stocking days. Kind of going back earlier, and I, I don't want to discourage anybody, but one of the things I mentioned earlier, the efficiency of operating in this new facility so most of all the volunteer, unfortunately, hours are, are pretty much in the, in the mornings and in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we have a, a number of dedicated 
uh, regulars that, that show up uh, every Tuesday. We were, we were just there this morning mm -hmm. uh, stocking the shelves. And uh, one of the other more recent benefits I, uh, I want to mention, too, is uh, Forgotten Harvest has changed their method of distribution. And uh, it's been a huge benefit for us. Um, what they do is they take all their food back to their warehouse, repackage it for each pantry so that they get a similar amount of food, brings it out. So we're getting a lot more food from them. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's the, the, the uh, clients are really appreciative of the additional food that we're yeah. getting from them. That's awesome. What's popular, like what disappears off the shelf quickly and mm -hmm. uh, what needs to be constantly restocked? Um, this time of year, it's uh, y your soups, your broth, mm -hmm. your chilies, uh, pastas, uh, and uh, um, your, your mac and cheese, stuff that's fairly easy, but uh, it's warm mm -hmm. and hearty to, uh, to fix. Um, pretty, uh, uh, we get, we, surprisingly, um, vegetables, we go through a lot of vegetables, doesn't matter which kind, and uh, canned fruits as well. Mm -hmm. We go through mm -hmm. a lot of canned food yeah. as well. Probably pineapple and mandarin oranges are the two favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only kind of canned fruit we eat in our house. So I'm like, okay. There you go. Yeah. I uh, always try to find, like when I'm donating, I always try to think of the things that, you know, that I would want to eat exactly. and stuff like that. I mean, I don't, whoever gives and has a heart to give is wonderful, but I, I just see so many ramen noodles and I'm like, I'm just, oh my gosh, let's like try and go outside of the scope. But I wanted to, one thing I wanted to point out was that um, the township has been participating with American Bloom for the last couple of years. And the first year they were, they take a tour, these these advisors take a tour. It's, it's a long story, but I'm getting to why, when we were here doing a tour of ONTV, they had also done a tour of, um, across the, when Forgotten Harvest oh. was here. And that was kind of a topic of conversation. They were like, holy cow, what is going on here? And we started talking about, you know, here in, in you know, February we do the, you know, this food drive and then there's also Forgotten Harvest and then all these other things that we do. And it's really interesting because we're used to it here and you talked about community and how everyone supports it. And it's really funny to watch somebody from the outside see their um, perspective on it and see their, we won a Community Vitality Award because of how we support people mm -hmm. in terms of helping them with food. Mm -hmm. Like it's very, uh, it, it, I know that a lot of places have this, but for some reason we outshone a lot of, like we do it really well here. Yeah. And, and that was a really mm -hmm. proud moment um, for us to get something like that. So it just goes to uh, you know everything that everyone does here to get ready for the food drive, what you all do there, Forgotten Harvest and all these other places that mm -hmm. are you know, blessings in a backpack. They just did trivia night, all of that stuff. I mean, it was impressive. Yeah. They were so impressed with mm -hmm. the way that we take care of our community in terms of food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On one hand, you know, it's a shame that there's a need for this, but right. on the other hand, the Lake Warren community has always come through yeah. and, and has helped out when, when yeah. needed. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to talk about your adopt a shelf program. Uh, you may have seen in the piece mm -hmm. that we rolled a little while ago, uh, the VFW uh, North Oakland Post. Uh, did a check presentation and they do that every year. What they do is they adopt a shelf, I think there are two shelves now that they adopt, and they'll present a check that will cover the stocking of that shelf for the entire year. Um, and they have the pasta and I think spaghetti sauce yep. shelf uh, area. Talk about your adopt a shelf program. Basically, that's what it is. People want to adopt a shelf. We ask them to make a donation, uh, and then um, we can buy the they can buy the food for the shelf, or uh, the client or the person can come in and stock the shelves. A lot of people used to do it where they bring their kids in and yeah. stock the shelf on a Saturday or you know whatever day, yeah. just to give the kids a little feeling for it. But um, that's very it's a very good way to donate, and it's a way if, that people want to help. Yeah. It's a way so, that they uh, can do it. We have a couple of the, the adopt a shelf um, uh, uh, people that, that, that issue a check and then um, then uh, through some of the programs, either through uh, through Myers corporate, I, I do some ordering so we mm -hmm. can get we can get things at a discounted price by ordering it through their corporate of ten to forty percent off. So mm -hmm. I can able to use those funds to, sure. to purchase there, and so I can get a larger quantity right. yeah. for that same amount of money. Right. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a benefit 
uh, that way as well. Awesome. Oh, wow. So why don't you share your contact information, whether someone needs your services or wants to volunteer their time, uh, how about giving out that contact information? They can just call Oxford Orion Fish, and I don't know the number off my head, do you? 248 <laughs> Right, and they'll leave a message on the machine, and the girls will call them and, um, you know, and answer any questions they have or whatever they can do for them. That's awesome. Uh, anything you want to say to the Lake Orion community for supporting uh, your efforts? Just to thank them immensely for everything they've done for us. We couldn't, we wouldn't be here without them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and thank and everybody that's going to participate into this particular uh, food drive right. for us. It's been a, a great boost, as, as Joe mentioned earlier, at this time of year, where it enables us to use, utilize those dollars and that food to restock our shelves for the, uh, the rest of the winter months. Uh, we, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's the community that supports us and enables us to, to feed people, and that's, that's what it's all about. Awesome. One thing right. I would like to mention is sure. that we also have started a program where we uh, bring snacks to the individual schools, grade schools through high school. So uh, they, uh, we buy snacks and they're bring, brought to the office and if the kids need something during the day, they can go to the office and, yes. and, and get a snack, you know, cheese and crackers or, yeah. you know, whatever, oh, healthy, healthy snacks. Right. Right. So yeah. granola yeah. bars, it's, it's amazing. I just would have never thought that was a necessity, but a lot of it's a big program. Yep. Yes, and it's yeah. going very That's well. Awesome. I was surprised to learn a number of years ago about the Blessings in a Backpack program and to find out that kids can get lunches mm -hmm. during the week at the school, but when they go home over the weekend, sometimes they might go the entire weekend without oh, being yeah. fed, and then they come back to school on Monday hungry, and that yeah. is so shocking to me. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So, it's a function yeah. if you're hungry. Yeah. Right, right, so. right. All right, well, thanks for joining us uh, today, and again, our, our food drive kicks off on Monday, but we're already starting to accept donations online. You can visit our website, uh, orionontv.org. There's a donate button on our website, and uh, so you can donate that way. You can stop in at our studio all next week to drop off uh, food donations or to drop off a check. Um, we'll take whatever you got all mm -hmm. next week. Help us break last year's record, and we'll deliver everything to fish uh, at the end of the week and uh, hope that we can help you get through these uh, next couple of months. Really appreciate it. Thank we you. We really thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Us. Yes, Thanks thank you. Thank you for coming out.